Among trailblazers and pioneers, there exists a common trait of dogged determination and aggressiveness that propel them to success despite the challenges they face. These qualities are certainly present in Kurt C. E. Lee, a hero and pioneer within the United States Marine Corps. Lee was born in 1926, growing up in Sacramento, California, the son of Chinese immigrants. Nicknamed Kurt by his family and friends, Lee joined the Marine Corps in 1944, eager to join the ongoing Allied effort in World War II. Though undersized, Lee was wiry and muscular, and especially competent, perhaps too competent for his wishes at the time, as rather than being shipped off to battle, he was retained at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego to serve as a language class instructor. Shortly after the war ended, Lee graduated from officer training school. Now a second lieutenant, Kurt Lee was the first non-white officer and first Asian American officer in the history of the United States Marine Corps. In September 1950, Lieutenant Lee landed with his Marines at Incheon, South Korea, along with fellow UN forces to push the North Koreans out of the South. Lee found himself fighting two battles, one against the North Korean forces, now aided by the People's Republic of China, and one against the attitudes among some of his fellow Marines who questioned his loyalty. Yet once in battle, those questions were put to rest, as Lee proved a tenacious fighter and skilled combat leader. On the night of November 2nd, 1950, Lee's unit came under attack by Chinese forces sent to aid the North Koreans retreating from Incheon. Keeping his men focused, Lee directed a counterattack, shouting at the enemy in Mandarin Chinese to sow confusion and advancing with grenade and rifle fire. Already wounded in the leg, he would be shot in the elbow by a sniper and was evacuated to a MASH unit for treatment. After several days in the hospital, Lee learned he was to be sent to Japan for recuperation. Determined to rejoin his men, Lee and another wounded Marine confiscated a jeep and located their comrades. His arm in a sling, Lee took command of a rifle platoon whose leader had been injured and began drilling them in combat maneuvers. This would pay off dearly one month later at the epic battle of Chosen Reservoir. At Chosen, Lee's platoon was ordered to spearhead a thrust to relieve a company of Marines surrounded by Chinese forces. His battalion commander, then Lieutenant Colonel Raymond G. Davis, ordered him to stay off the heavily defended roads, a sure death trap, instead attacking from the snowy hills. Lee, his arm still in a cast, led his platoon in the attack, advancing through heavy enemy fire, eventually forcing their way to the stranded Marines. Again Lee was shot, and again he refused to yield, regrouping his men to secure a vital roadway. On December 8, 1950, Lee was targeted by a Chinese machine gunner, wounding him seriously and ending his Korean War service. For his role in leading the relief of the stranded Marines, Ray Davis was awarded the Medal of Honor, while Kurt Lee was awarded the Silver Star for his actions in battle. Lee was also presented the Navy Cross for his valor at Incheon the previous month. It seemed valor ran in the family, as Kurt's younger brother, Chu Man Lee, earned the Distinguished Service Cross for heroic actions as a U.S. Army officer in battle that same month. Kurt Lee would go on to serve in Vietnam, retiring in 1968 with the rank of Major. Raymond Davis, who rose to Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, called Lee the bravest Marine he ever knew. It is fitting, then, for his groundbreaking path through the Marine Corps and for his valor on the battlefield, that Major Kurt C. E. Lee is named the 2012 recipient of the American Veterans Center's Raymond G. Davis Award.